Okay, you can, so okay. I just want to give people a sense of what we're going to do. Brian will talk about the status of MathML. Um, then I'll talk about what's in what we call MathML core and what's not in. Talk about the charter that we're going to propose in a few weeks. And then we're going to open it up for discussion. So Brian, go ahead, take it away. Okay, you can see my slides? Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, yeah, welcome. We wanted to start with like some history on where things are uh, for people who might not know. So uh, all the way back when the web was created, there were two things that were obvious needs that the web didn't have yet. There were math and graphics. So when the W3C was started, uh, these were two things that were taken up immediately. And two of the first specs that we got were MathML and SVG. And math was the markup standard for uh, displaying all the maths. Uh, that's the idea. It was integrated into the HTML parser, these two. Uh, they're very special. Even if your browser doesn't render things, they do parse them correctly. And for one brief shining instant, we had um, four of the five major implementations that had some implementation of MathML support. Um, that's not to say they were all good. Some of them were pretty bad. And in fact, um, <clears throat> there were lots of questions and open challenges that people had. We were changing the way that we think about specs, the way that we do specs, uh, trying to increase interoperability. And so when Blink split from WebKit, MathML was removed. And this began this long period of limbo for math on the web. Uh, and this question of where does this leave MathML? Like, is it a standard? Is it not a standard? Is it going to eventually get done? Is it not? Are we starting over? And this is a shame because MathML has this amazing ecosystem outside of browser implementations, and it has lots of content, like millions of MathML on uh, Wikipedia alone. And two of three remaining browser engines support it, and it's one of the most starred bugs on Chromium. But since we didn't have it, if you were to pull something up, say, two years ago, uh, in your Chromium browser, it would render like this, which is gibberish, because it should look like this. And as you see, without that, um, we lose the content. This is really important. And so that's obviously not acceptable. And so we rely on trickery. We turn it into images, or we use JavaScript to convert a tree into a tree that draws those things for you manually. But uh, that's silly for text. Math is text. Um, the ability to render and share research and text is not controversial. It's kind of the point of the web. And math is an important part of every writing system. And in fact, our entire society is built on things that rely on us being able to share and understand text and make it accessible. Um, this is especially important if, for example, hypothetically, we were in the middle of a pandemic and wanted to share research about COVID. Uh, this is, I think, necessary. Um, or if our children are being educated from home and they need to learn math, I think you can see why these are societally important issues. Um, so how do we resolve this is the question. And the MathML Refresh community group uh, got together to solve this problem. And uh, one of the things that we did is to split what was the old MathML specification into a thing called core. And then a thing called core that extends, uh, a thing called full that extends core. And core is focused on the things that are the intersection, uh, is the uh, things that are supported by at least some browsers in some sense, uh, things that are supported by tools, things that have a lot of existing content. And so we created the MathML core uh, draft. And this aims to resolve a lot of mismatches from the past. Uh, it specifies all of those things that were unspecified in previous eras, how it integrates with HTML and CSS and SVG and the DOM. Uh, even things like this that seem really, really basic did not work in any browser a couple of years ago. And today they do, thanks to this work. Uh, there's lots of things about CSS integration and some new CSS resolutions to make this all work well. And uh, this allows us to approach it the way that we approach modern standards and create tests that we agree that these are the tests that work and that they are according to the spec. 
so my company, Agalia, also uh, led the charge to provide an implementation. Uh, we spent last year developing a prototype downstream so that we could answer many of the hard questions and have a good proposal. Uh, and with those web platform tests in hand, you can see that this is the implementation report that we have. Um, there was about 2,400 tests and various browsers passing various numbers of them. Now you might ask, why would these ones that already had MathML be less? Um, and that's because there were no actual answers or interoperability to a lot of these questions. Uh, so everybody is kind of answering parts of these questions for the first time, and that's what these tests indicate. But uh, just to show that this is not like somebody pushing, these have actually gone up by hundreds in the past year. And even last year, this is what that level of interoperability looked like. So this is a very high bar that we're setting now, actually. I think that even last year, this is very good. And this year, it has only gotten better by hundreds. So we're hoping to finish up our level one implementation in Chromium by the end of 2020. Uh, we recently had a tag review complete. And we think that that was really, really good. And we believe that we have good foundations in level one. Neil is going to tell you more about what is and isn't in level one and why. We think it's really well integrated with the platform. And we're looking forward to uh, discussing our proposed charter and moving math on the web forward as a first class citizen. Because what we want to do is resolve this problem where there is no question that MathML is part of the web that is just as much a part of the web as headings and tables and paragraphs. Um, so thank you. Uh, please lend your support in any way that you can. Uh, support the charter. Join the working group once it's established. Join the community group in the meantime. Uh, file bugs. Uh, or come talk to us about how you can help. Thanks. So yeah, so thanks, Brian. Um, um, so what's in core? Um, a lot of stuff's in core. So scripts, subscripts and superscripts, limits and accents, fractions, roots, uh, large operators, the stretchy characters, tables so that you could do matrices and determinants, and uh, proper math typography, which is really about specifying a lot of the low level details of math layout. So in this particular example, which is standard deviation example, you'll see that the fraction has a large capital N, but you'll see the small, a smaller N sitting on top of the summation sign. You'll see different spacing around the um, equal signs uh, in the uh, outside, sigma equals, and the, and the summation sign, I equals one. And there's even a little different spacings for the equals and the minus. So that's all proper math typo typography. Um, so that's all part of uh, core. And so you may be saying, well, that looks like pretty much all of math and it is a lot of math. It's not quite everything. So what's not in core um, right now, uh, we're gonna have a core level two and that'll incorporate some more things. So one thing is line breaking and indentation. So if you have a larger expression, it needs to break and then it needs to figure out how to indent. Often the indentation wants to come back to say, an equal sign or something. And so you align equal signs in the equation when it breaks. Uh, beveled fractions, uh, which is used for inline math sometimes. Um, elementary math, that's been very poorly supported uh, both on the web and outside the web. Tools don't do that well. It's a little bit different um, than other kinds of math because it represents a process, but uh, we, we hope to uh, there is a polyfill now for that, and perhaps someday that'll join core. Uh, there's a thing called M enclose, which is uh, useful for strikeouts, as in the example there, and it has some other uses. Um, most M style attributes, uh, labeling rows in a table. So often you say this is equation number 3.1, and you want it to align with uh, the rest of the equations. So that's not in there now. Um, Links, uh, MathML3 said links belong on all elements, but links are problematic. So that's not in core at the moment. Um, number of little used attributes that were part of MathML3 uh, are not in core. And also there are some obscure and mostly unimplemented tags for alignment. 
So now I want to move on quickly to the charter and just cover what's uh, in the charter. And um, so the scope is we're obviously going to develop some racks and uh, test suites. Um, we really want to clarify, as Brian has talked about, the current use of web technologies um, like JavaScript APIs and CSS integration. Um, we want to uh, identify some uh, requirements, normative requirements that uh, for accessibility to make sure that there's some minimal levels of accessibility associated with MathML. It's actually quite good now, better than display, but um, it, it's, it's all kind of ad hoc at the moment. And so we want to try and push that forward and make it official. Um, and we're also looking at removing some elements and attributes from MathML that really have had minimal adoption and usage. Uh, what's out of scope is we're not going to add some new elements that are for use outside of the platform. Uh, MathML is used uh, widely outside of uh, the web, but we don't, uh, for this group, we're not planning to add anything new there. We want to try and stabilize it in that sense. Um, uh, we don't. Uh, want to remove things from MathML that have significant usage. So the goal here is to make sure that all the current MathML continues to work um, that's being used widely. As I said, there are a few things that are obscure that people have not really taken up. And so that we may drop. Um, we are not going to remove content MathML. The MathML spec really has two parts. One is about uh, display and one was about um, semantics. This semantics part hasn't had wide adoption um, and we're looking at adding some more ways of uh, allowing authors to specify author intent in um, MathML presentation and perhaps in the future that will be powerful enough to eliminate the need for content MathML, but that's not part of this goal uh, for this uh, round of the charter. So the deliverables, as Brian mentioned, is core level one, which is what we, we discussed there, and that's uh, what's specified in, um, and I seem to have lost my links there. I, I guess maybe I didn't put them in there. Um, core level one, uh, which we have a reasonable start at a spec on, we also want to deliver a core level two, which to which the idea is um, we want to talk about the things that we plan to do next that we know should be in uh, core at some point, but it's too much to do as the first bite. And then MathML full, so that wants to realign itself, um, pointing off to core, hopefully shrinking the spec significantly when we do that, but still describing the full MathML that's uh, used outside of the web um, also. So um, all the things that were in MathML 3 that are used would be in part of core. Um, and then we have some non-normative deliverables. Um, so obviously there's some test suites and implementation reports for the spec. Um, we want to um, describe accessibility techniques, um, how people can um, make math more accessible, uh, especially with the new ideas about uh, authoring intent. Um, we hope to have at least one tech to MathML converter that incorporates the accessibility and searchability annotations um, uh, uh, in the MathML output. Um, again, code to convert content MathML to presentation with accessibility and search annotations. Again, to see about the equivalence of uh, the, the ideas that we have for enhancing presentation so that it's more accessible. And um, I've committed, and uh, hopefully we'll get some other people to commit, um, that uh, we'll be able to uh, have some code that converts presentation MathML into speech or content MathML that takes advantage of these new author intent so that you don't end up with a speech that's not proper for um, to do, uh, the thing. So at this point, um, I want to open this up uh, real soon um, to the uh, discussion. Just briefly, some of the ideas I'd like to get some charter feedback, especially around polyfilling and extending MathML, shadow DOM, especially for those elements of MathML that aren't in core. Be able, it'd be nice to be able to have the polyfills cleaner. So shadowings, maybe some of the uh, non core MathML elements. Um, 
adding some more new elements that people might do. Um, again, more top, to, um, talking about layouts for CSS and Houdini fonts linking. Um, one of the issues is uh, there's a uh, initial beginning for accessibility mappings for MathML. Um, so that's definitely a topic to discuss. Search is something we haven't really talked about today, but searching for math would be an interesting topic to talk about. And, and lastly, um, as Brian likes to say, the elephant in the room is who's gonna do all the work? Um, Galia has spent a long time um, in the last, what, two years probably, Brian, where um, they've uh, been doing this. They did the first part that was funded by some outside sources, but they've mostly been funding it recently with their own internal resources. There hasn't been a lot of vendor support for MathML. It's not that they don't like MathML as far as I know, but um, the actual commitment to spend dollars on it hasn't really been there. And then there's some other implementations that people have sort of um, committed to. So that's great. They're gonna do some work. I've listed a few here. Um, so uh, with that, let's stop the recording and um, let's open it up for discussion.